When I met Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson in 2018 at the press junket for his first World War film, I had no idea that I was about to be given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Peter's been interested in the First World War since he was a child. He spent his life collecting treasure from that time, and we've been invited to New Zealand to explore it. From the largest collection of World War I planes on the planet, a warehouse that echoes into the past. The never before seen footage of the first time Peter picked up a camera. And Peter shares his family history as well as how it shaped his life. I was terrified because I thought, well, my grandfather was in the First World War, my father was in the Second World War, so does that mean I'm going to be in the Third, third World War? And you know, that's, what, that's what I was thinking, and I was ter terrified of the idea. I'm in Peter's home city of Wellington to begin my exploration of his incredible world. We're meeting at the birthplace of many of Peter's cinematic marvels, Park Road post-production. Peter's been interested in the First World War for as long as he can remember, and that's not surprising when you hear his family history, including how the actions of a German machine gunner shaped his very existence. Hi, you all right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, good. yeah, I'm good. Here we go. Go take one. Born in 1961, Peter grew up surrounded by stories of war. His dad, William, was in the British Army. His mom, Joan, worked in the de Havilland Aircraft Factory in Hatfield. They emigrated from Britain separately and met in New Zealand. My dad was, um, you know, was in the Second World War. He was in, um, he was in the Royal Ordnance Corps in, in, on Malta during the siege of Malta for th to two years and went, went into Italy after that. And so. Dad had, you know, I was very much aware of his army um, stories and he would talk, talk to me and then occasionally he'd tell me stories about his father, who was no longer alive. Peter's grandfather William joined up in 1910, enlisting with the South Wales Borderers, which is now the Royal Welsh. William was serving in China when war broke out in 1914. He took part in joint operations with the Japanese against the German territory of Qingdao. In 1915, William was posted to Gallipoli, one of the bloodiest battles of the war. It was during this time he was mentioned in dispatches for conspicuous gallantry. An article in the London Gazette describes how the 23-year-old led his soldiers forward to reoccupy an advanced post. For these actions, he was later awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. His grandfather fought alongside New Zealanders at Gallipoli and developed a respect for them. Stories of that time influenced Peter's dad to emigrate there years later. But it was the first day of the Somme in 1916 that had the biggest impact. According to his war records, William was injured by a German machine gunner and was brought home to recover in England, which is where he met Peter's grandmother. William never got to meet his grandson as he died in 1940. However, the impact he's had on Peter's life is felt by millions around the world today through his work. So do you think growing up with all of that around you, that's what sparked your interest? I think so. I, you know, you never really know what actually sparks it. There's never a moment where a, a light comes on and you go, oh. But I certainly, that's what, you know, I mean, I, I grew up surrounded by, by um, veterans of two world wars. You know, so so what, what I was, the sort of the things that I was exposed to and listened to and the conversations I, that, that happened in our house when Dad would have friends over and everything else, it was all geared towards the, the war, really. Um, and and so you know and so I would just got an interest and then you know you do obviously have that family thing. If you had been in the World War and about in that time, the First World War, how do you think you would have felt about having to go to war? Well, I can answer that a little bit because um, growing up in, 19, in New Zealand in nineteen you know in the sixties and early seventies, there was the Vietnam War was on and and New Zealanders were going to the Vietnam War. I mean, we we, we you know we had troops there. And, um, and I was actually kind of, uh, you know, and there was a Russian nuclear thing was going on, you know, the Cold War and everything else. And so I was, I was actually, I was ter terrified because I thought, well, my grandfather was in the First World War, my father was in the Second World War, so does that mean I'm going to be in the Third, third World War? And, you know, that's what, that's what I was thinking, and I was ter terrified of the idea. And that interest, those family stories, inspired his earliest filmmaking. 
the first ever thing you ever filmed was merging your two passions, the your interest in the military and yeah. film. What, you mean when I was a kid? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't really have a passion in filmmaking then because it was just the beginning of it. But yeah, but the, I, my parents got a Super 8 movie camera uh, to make home movies with, not for me to make films, but just for you know family use. Um, and I would have been about uh, eight years old, maybe, when it arrived in the house, you know. So here it is, the first time he shared this with the world, the beginning of Peter Jackson's incredible journey into film. But then I, I kind of like the idea of making um, little sort of fictional films, you know, rather than just fa family films, which we also did that too. So when one of the things I, when the, so the very first sort of film that I have that I actually shot, um, you know, of me and some friends actually doing some sort of fictional thing was, was we, I went into a parents' garden, I dug a trench. I got my friends to help me because it was a proper full-size trench. Um, and we did a little sort of a, it's not, you can't even really call it a film, it's a bunch of shots of us just jumping in and out of the trench and, and pretending to smoke because we were sort of eight, eight year old kids so we could, so we couldn't really smoke but we were pretending to, to have you know, you know um, just what you see in the in the in the sort of adult movies <laughs> um, and and, and uh, that was that was the very first thing I ever actually filmed of a fictional nature yeah I was probably about eight, eight or nine years old that's amazing, isn't it? Not the average eight-year-old would be... Uh, and your mum and dad as well, allowing you, like, do you mind if I just dig a few trenches? Well, fortunately, where we lived, we, you know, we didn't have a big property at, at all, but they had, you know, and mum and dad would love to... Do, they had a garden that they were very proud of, but right down the very end of the garden was a sort of a rubbishy area where a lot of the, the junk would be thrown and all that sort of stuff. So there was a little sort of a patch at the end that, that was available for me to dig trench in, yeah. So, a family history wrapped up in the British Army, informing one of the great creative minds of the present day. But while for years Peter has been inspired by his family's past, we had a surprise for him, that family history reaching out to him. We got in touch with your, uh, with the Royal Welsh, which was of course your grandfather's regiment yes, known as the yes. South Wales Borderers. Yes, so we explain yes. what we were going to do. Yes, yes. And <laughs> what they've done is, they wow. went into the museum, the South Wales uh, Borderers Museum. Uh, at Brecon, yeah. And yeah. then there was this silver sphinx that was- Yes, um, on their badge. Yeah, so this was yeah. actually in the museum. This was given to, wow. Um, wow. this was given to the regiment. They're not quite sure when, but it was a while ago. So all the trustees signed oh, it off and- as And they'd like, yeah, oh, that you to so have that, it. That is really, 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 um, oh, that's great. <laughs> great, thank, thank you, thank you. There's not that, then there's more as well. Yes. Um, so we, we actually right. asked them to record you a message. Okay. So yeah. Flick's just gonna... Yeah. As we approach Anzac Day, the Royal Welsh would like to mark the close bonds between the United Kingdom and New Zealand and recognise your contribution to commemorating the centenary of the First World War in the film They Shall Not Grow Old. Sir, given William Jackson, your grandfather's connection to the regiment, it is our honour to present this silver piece. The Sphinx represents the, the battle honour granted after the 24th of Foot's participation in the Battle of Alexandria in 1801. It later became the distinctive feature of the cat badge of the South Wales Borderers. The Sphinx remains proudly shown on the colours of both battalions of the Royal Welsh today. Mm, mm, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. So they were very excited yeah. to, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> to get that, that to really you. Great. Yeah, wow. This is, this is going to be in the pride of place, place on, on my desk now. That's great. Wow, cool. And they've also uh, given, they've got you a regimental tie, which they give to uh, only yep. friends right. of the right. regiment. Like my, the, the time in my life where I wear ties is fairly lim limited, but, but, the, but, but should, the, should the need to wear a tie ever arise again, I will make sure it's a tie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for this? I am ready, Pete. You sure? Yeah. Okay, here it's we go. <laughs> it's huge, isn't it? It's somewhat substantial. Next time, inside the Warehouse of Wonders, how Peter's private collection of World War I memorabilia got so out of hand, he hired a full-time historian to look after it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.